Hello, this is Dr. Amit Filora and um, I'm here to present a presentation on breast cancer. Before I proceed further, I would like to uh, introduce myself. I did my PhD in uh, recruitment and selection process from APS uh, Rima. I did my uh, bachelor's uh, in uh, science and IT. Further, I did my master's in uh, counseling psychology. I have a rich experience uh, related uh, to mental health illness and uh, counseling uh, related uh, issues and uh, I have uh, dealt many cases, I have done many counselings, I have rich experience in counselling. So one of the things I uh, you know, uh, came across that many of, uh, forget about the uneducated people, many of our uh, educated, well educated and uh, learned uh, people, learned people uh, are not aware what breast cancer is. There are many things they are not aware and it, was, it, it brought to me in surprise that many of uh, the people don't know that men also have breast cancers. So uh, I thought let's take an initiative and um, try and uh, uh, you know discuss or present the basic uh, informative information on breast cancer. So before I proceed further uh, what breast cancer is we'll discuss what is um, uh, what is a cancer what are the different types of behavior of cells? What what is the structure of cell? How cancer uh, you know get um, uh, crucial and uh, what are the different stages? So uh, let's uh, first begin with um, trying to understand what cancer is. So cancer is nothing but um, now let us try to understand what cancer is. Generally, uh, cancer is considered as a single disease. However, uh, it is uh, a term which is used to describe uh, diseases that became that begins in a cell. So, cell is the basic structure of uh, or basic unit of a body. Our own human body consists of trillions of cell, which is categorized into more than 200 different types uh, uh, and of cells combining together to uh, to form tissues. Tissues are like uh, skins, breasts, muscle, bones, etc. So let us try to understand uh, what cancer is. But before then that, we'll try to understand how a normal cell behaves and how a cancer cell behaves. That we'll see in the next slide. Now, but what is a cell? Cell, uh, what parts of, what are the things present in the cell? Cell consists of a cell membrane, that is a plasma membrane, uh, a cytoplasm, then nucleus, uh, uh, which is, uh, and then ER, that is endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, centrosomes, uh, mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell, ribosomes, lysosomes, uh, peroxisomes, and cytoskeleton and vacuole. So these are some uh, things which which are present uh, inside the cell. But but what exactly these things are? Um, I know it uh, looks like a jargon and uh, tough words, but in a, uh, I'll try to simplify. Uh, see, so plasma membrane is um, a membrane which uh, it's it's like a border. So whatever things inside are uh, things are there inside um, a cell. Uh, and it, it tries to, um, you know, um, uh, uh, differentiate or uh, um, how how do I put across? Across it's it's uh, like something which uh, separates the external environment with the internal environment of the cell, so that uh, both of the things do not mix. Now uh, coming out to the cytoplasm. What is cytoplasm? Basically, it's the cell environment. Uh, fluid mostly and which consists which is uh, closed by the membrane our uh, plasma membrane and it consists of various uh, different organelles now coming out to be how uh, you know a cell is a living body but how do it functions it uh, every living organi uh, uh, or organizer or organism has a brain what is the brain of the cell that is nucleus nucleus consists of mostly uh, most of the part of the nucleus consists of uh, genetic material which is in the form of dna 
that is the brain and then come out to be endoplasmic reticulum what is endoplasmic reticulum it is a cell pipeline communication happens through it so a uh, system of metabolic processes that is smooth ER uh, protein manufacturing through ribosomes uh, that is rough ER so uh, these are the you know uh, uh, protein manufacturing and ribosomes and metabolic system metabolic uh, systems um, metabolic processes helps you know communication happens inside the uh, cell itself so that is basically a cell pipeline now coming out to be Golgi apparatus what it is it is a cell delivery center so uh, they, they consist of tag of vessels uh, proteins that help uh, them to carry to their correct destination so one t tags vessels are there which which are basically uh, um, taken away by the pro proteins and uh, uh, delivered at the correct uh, place now coming out to the centrosome that is the cell anchor organelles and uh, produce uh, and uh, produces the micro tubules of the cell skeleton now coming out to be the powerhouse of the cell what is the powerhouse of the cell where all uh, all kind of power generation happens that is the mitochondria they produce energy uh, and this energy uh, is uh, produced by breaking down uh, carbohydrates and uh, lipids and which um, forms molecules uh, like ATPs now coming out to be ribosomes there are the cell factory uh, cell factories which uh, you know uh, translates uh, RNA to pro into proteins now lysosomes what is lysosome it's a cell stomach vessels filled with digestive proteins can absorb something and break down into um, recycled pieces so everything which is you know in a process of digestion comes over here now coming out to be peroxisome that is cells firemen what is it uh, vesicles that defend or neutralize the cell from free radicals basically protectors of the cell uh, cell uh, cytoskeleton uh, that is cells shape shifter it modifies the cells shape and ensures the mechanical resistance to uh, deformation vacuole cell compartments enclosed storage vessels which are filled with water containing inorganic and organic molecules now uh, let us try to understand the normal uh, cell behavior uh, normally uh, cells grow and divide in uh, div divide to produce more cells than the body needs them this process take uh, place according to the genetic programs and instructions that are unique to each type of the cell as the cell grows it takes its proper placing um, among other cells when, say, uh, when cells matures, it performs the task it's, uh, it's genetically programmed to do so. That is whatever work is assigned to it, it completes it. And uh, when that work is uh, completed, uh, it, it further, uh, you know, uh, after a certain number of uh, divisions, uh, a cell is programmed to die. This process is called as apop apoptosis. And... Uh, it is replaced by a new younger cell so basically a cell is performed is uh, programmed to uh, you know uh, do a, a, a task and when the task is gets com uh, when the cell uh, its task uh, gets completed it's programmed to die it's a normal um, you know living uh, structure so this uh, you know for getting you know uh, birth they're getting formed getting divided into different uh, uh, numbers and performing each individual task and then uh, uh, get, and then the dying this entire process is called as apoptosis so when the cell dies it is replaced by the new cells so uh, this is a functioning of a normal healthy body so cells are also equipped with control designed to prevent them from making too many copies of forms uh, making 
flawed copies of them so they, which means that you know a cell will replicate but it will it is it will not uh, you know form n number of copies of it and um, so no cell however is uh, an island into itself the body cells are regularly bombarded at their surfaces by nutrients and by hormonal and chemical signals including signals from neighboring cells so uh, to remain alive and healthy cell must decode filter and respond properly to many such molecular conversations so for example a normal cells are stimulated to multiply by molecular messages called as growth signals so whenever a, a growth signal comes a cell divides so they are they also received anti growth signals uh, which means stop you have to stop the division so if you cut so for example if you cut your uh, your uh, if you are by mistake your hand gets cut or a skin gets cut skin cells skin cells around uh, the wound start to multiply it and they try uh, to replace the injured cells when the gap is filled properly cell growth turn off means your wounds get healed in. So basically, अगर आपको एक कट लगता है और कट लगने के करने के बाद आपके आसपास के जो सेल्स रहते हैं वो मल्टीप्लाई करना शुरू कर देते हैं और जो डैमेज सेल्स होते हैं उनको रिप्लेस करके उस वूड को हील कर देते हैं सो so, ये ऐसा कैसा होता है ग्रोथ सिग्नल के बेसिस से होता है जब उसको ग्रोथ सिग्नल मिलता है एंड तो वो मल्टीप्लाई करते हैं और जब जब उनको एंटी ग्रोथ सिग्नल मिलता है तो वो मल्टीप्लाई करना बंद कर देते हैं so uh, like some researchers compare this indicate uh, network of cellular signaling pathways to computer chips but alag alag scientists many different scientists have a different views of seeing some compare it to computer chips the signals are coming and signal based on the signal cells are, are, are behaving and uh, it's a complete uh, pathway pathways compared with the computer network many many kind of uh, you know speculations happen now that is a uh, uh, you know a normal cell behavior now coming out to cancer cell behavior what do you mean by cancer cells so uh, cancer cells results when there is a loss of control in this in, in uh, intricate system of normal cell growth matlab like maine jaise pehle bataya ki cell growth rukti hai jab usko anti growth signal milta hai maan lo agar wo anti growth signal ko na maane ya fir uh, something goes wrong so cell division will not stop it will continue to divide so that is what you know there is a problem something that's the reason it's replicating it's dividing and a uh, such kind of overgrowth of cells are called as uh, abnormal cells and uh, these cells are complex they are lengthy multi step process or entire process of this is called as car uh, carcinogenesis it starts with transformation of one normal cells into abnormal cell uh and over time the abnormal cells multiply out of control to uh, to accumulate into a mass and called as growth or a tumor this tumor can be benign or this tumor can be ca carcin <clears throat> cancer cells can also spread throughout the body it's it's uh, very um, normal that uh if one portion of your body uh is a uh, affected with cancerous cells it may spread up to different organs diff uh, different part of your body as well it is not restricted to one particular organ or one particular portion of your body so even though cancer cells arise from normal cell bodies they change in uh, change so much that they don't look like a normal cells their their anatomy their behavior everything gets changed they are completely different basically if we compare uh, a normal cell uh, body is like a law abiding citizen they uh, they uh, start with the growth signal they stop with the anti growth signal and um, and they follow the rules uh, which is given which is uh, which is as per the genetic instructions and they multiply uh, as they are uh, told to they stop multiplying as they are told to uh, and they die when they, they are told to die whereas cancer cells are uh, you know biological anarchist 
they stop they, they, they do not follow any rule they continue dividing and uh, they work as per their will and um, uh, they have a completely different characteristic their growth is disorderly and they don't mature properly unlike normal cells which trends from exact copies of themselves when they divide whereas the cancer cells are more likely to change when they divide tumor cells often look uh, from one different from one another and they can be highly disorganized as well these abnormal cells tumble over each other and they stack upon the neighboring uh, cells now now what what exactly the characteristics of the cancer cells are that is very important to know but uh, before then that uh, we proceed to know what uh, what cancerous cells are let let us try to understand what is the basic structure of the cell So, cancer results when there is loss of control in in, uh, in this uh, intricate system of normal cells. Cell, uh, cell is characterized by overgrowth of abnormal cells. The development of these abnormal cells is complex, lengthy, multi-step process it's, and it's called as carcinogenesis. Cancer cells can spread throughout the body. As you can see uh, in the diagram mentioned below, there is a normal cell and it is getting transformed into the abnormal cell. So abnormal cells multiply and uh, it gets converted into tumor. And when the invasions happen um, by this tumor, they invade the cells and tissue. The, the uh, tumors can be carcinogenic, they can be benign as well. Now, uh, let us discuss um, about um, cancer development. Cancer is characterized by overgrowth of abnormal cells, as I said previously. Uh, it's a multi step process called as carcinogenesis. Now, uh, let us try to understand how uh, development of cancer happens. So, now first, there's a normal cell. Normal cells grow and divide in an ordinary fashion that we all know. Now comes a stage called as hyperplasia. Now, the it's a stage when uh, the in, uh, intricate system of cell development and growth is disrupted, which means the normality of cell growth gets disturbed, and um, due to which um, um, you know overproduction of normal appearing cells happen. That's the first stage. So you'll find a lot of cells uh, getting divided and a similar kind of normal cells are appearing but the but the growth is disrupted it's not a normal growth this phase is called as hyperplasia now comes uh, another in the next stage comes which is called as atypical hyperplasia now what is it so uh, when there is an excess cell stack upon one another some start taking on the abnormal appearance of the so means you know basically cells getting accumulated one over each other and um, you know uh, they uh, start behave their appearance start looking as an abnormal cells that phase is called as atypical hyperplasia now comes as uh, non-invasive cancer cells uh, the abnormal cells continue to change their appearance as usual and um, they tend to multiply and um, they develop, they get changed into cancer. Carcin. The cancer remains confined within the normal border. So now in this, uh, in this phrase, the abnormal cells are dividing, uh, are, are dividing in, into one unit itself. So multiplication of cell is, uh, uh, you know, happening in one unit itself. It's not going outside the border. So which means that cancer remains confined under the normal border. It has not spread out. That phase is called as non-invasive cancer. Means it has not spread throughout the body, but is confined to one particular place. Now comes the fourth stage, uh, fourth uh, uh, development, which is called as invasive cancer. So as the cal uh, uh, cancer cells invade deeper into surrounding tissues, eventually they can spread into nearby lymph channels. 
tiny blood vessels that is uh, capillaries and which can carry the cancer cells to other part of the body so now it uh, you know uh, now these cancerous cells can they, they'll start invading other parts uh, they will be they break the normal border and uh, these cells can be carried about carried through different part of body through uh, capillaries through blood uh, blood vessels or um, you know and can, and it, uh, by this the entire um, you know uh, body can infect it with the cancerous cell so that is how a cancer is spread throughout the body now uh, let's talk about what cell, cell biology cancer cell biology is uh, basically it consists of three things uh, cell membrane cytoplasm and nucleus so let us start how exactly uh, cancer cell uh, cancer biology is the normal functioning of a cell is uh, controlled by many levels including uh, its surface that is a uh, cell membrane interior that is cytoplasm and the growth control center nucleus changes that may lead to cancer development and growth can occur at any of these levels now first we'll talk about uh, changes that may happen in our cell membrane uh, at cell surface chemical uh, messengers that is both uh, that uh, that the signal of cell to divide that is growth factors and uh, nutrients bind to receptors on the cell surface cancer cells uh, overexpress receptors that capture growth factors and nutrients so they push the cell membrane and uh, of the receptors so you may be able to see if you uh, you know changes or ruptures in the cell membrane now coming out to the cytoplasm signal from growth factors are sent to the cell nucleus by way of a cascading series of so-called secondary messengers cancer cells can cause numerous growth promoting changes in these signaling pathways now comes to the final point uh, nucleus within the tightly oiled dna of each cell are genet genetic instructions to make all the proteins um, a cell needs to carry out its work which genes are turned on depends on the signal received from the cytoplasm conveyed by transcription factors transcription factors bind to dna of targeted genes cell division is a control uh, is controlled within the nucleus too before a cell can divide it must pass through a tightly governed cycle with several checkpoints this to uh, this is to ensure that an injured cell doesn't divide until damaged dna has been repaired cancer cells lack these checkpoint mechanism allowing altered cells to grow and uh, proliferate so this is how uh, you know this cancer biology is now we will talk further let us study about few characteristic um, of cancer one is supply supply their own growth signal second is stop they uh, stop responding uh, to anti growth signals from neighboring cells third is develop they develop their own blood supply and fourth uh, they don't self destruct these are the few characters uh, characteristics of cancer now let us uh, try to you know um, study more about it like uh, what exactly um, these terminology means supply their own growth signal what does that mean so it means a uh, normal cells receive their own growth signals from the neighboring cells or uh, uh, hormones but the cancer cells generate many of their own growth signals they also uh, coerce their um, uh, neighbors uh, to make growth factors that stimulate their growth so they further uh, infect uh, uh, they further uh, you know promote uh, or provoke different uh, other cells to follow the same leak and uh, divide and uh, abnormally 
Now comes that stop responding to anti-growth signal from neighboring cells. What does that mean? So uh, cancer cells don't obey the molecular masses. It's a cell conversation. They don't agree to that. And, um, and they normally stop uh, cell growth to maintain a balanced growth cycle. So the, uh, the normal balanced growth cycle of the cell is disturbed by these abnormal uh, cells because they stop listening to the uh, anti-growth signals. Now coming to develop their own blood supply, do they have the capacity to do that? Of course, yes. A tumor gets uh, the nutrients and oxygen it needs by developing new blood vessels and this process is called as NT, uh, uh, angiogenesis. So normally angiogenesis is uh, you know tightly regulated process but the carcinous uh, tumors don't al uh, always follow the regulation. So uh, they have their own blood vessels, they get their nutrients and oxygen supply uh, by these vessels and this entire uh, uh, process is called, like I said, called as angiogenesis. Angiogenesis, I'm so sorry. Now comes as don't self-destruct. They will never destruct, uh, the, they will never have a process of, of self-destruction. What does that mean? A normal, like as, uh, in previous slides, I said that a cell has a task to do. It divides and it divides and divides and ultimately when its task is completed, it dies. It doesn't happen with the carcinic uh, cells. They don't um, follow that T. So uh, what exact, exactly happens is that normal cells have a natural life cycle. They age and they eventually they die. That pro, uh, that is uh, that process is called as programmed cell death uh, cancer cells become seemingly immortal and resist the process of death the resistance uh, is a hallmark of most of if not all types of cancer although the, uh, the life-threatening properties uh, cancer cells acquire may seem uh, you know uh, daunting Keep in mind that these properties can serve as target for the treatment um, and um, the, uh, that is how the scientists are taking advantage of certain cell, uh, you know, cancer cells characteristics in designing new drugs. So uh, that's one, one good thing and um, now let's go further. Let's now let us try to understand what genetics is and uh, we'll, we'll discuss this thing further. Genetics, um, like as I said, each cell in the body except for the mature red blood cells has control center. This is called as nucleus. Nucleus houses your DNA, a long double stranded structure composed of sugar, sugar and phosphate molecules that are joined together by paired chemicals called as nucleotide bases. DNA is tightly packed into structure called as chromosomes. There are two sets of 23 chromosomes in a cell nucleus, a total which makes a total of 46 chromosomes. One set comes from each parent. The only cell that don't contain the two sets of chromosomes are sex cells, that is eggs and sperm. So these uh, contains only one set of um, chromosomes. Thus, when an egg and the sperm joins together to form what's uh, that form a zygote. The zygote consists of a new complete set of 46 chromosomes. Now what is gene? A gene is defined a segment of DNA on a chromosome. Genes are blueprints of the cell of your body. They provide instructions for making protein that in turn do the business of particular cell. So basically they are the link and um, many kinds of proteins play various role in the body. They control how cells divide, grow and function. So they play an important role in decision factor as you can say in the process of genetics. Genes determine characteristics such as how tall you are, what will be your, the color of your eye and certain features like that. They tell your body to uh, repair tissues that has been injured and to keep tumors, uh, you know, keep tumors from uh, growing. 
your genes also influence your susceptibility to disease such as cancer how immune you are genetics is the study of genes and disease caused by genetic defect it's, a, it's the whole together whatever we i said is uh, the study of um, uh, the entire thing is called as genetics so now when a cell divides each gene must be copied so that each of the two resulting cells has the complete set of genes mistakes in this process can do occur quite often these mistakes are harmless and easily repaired but sometimes they can lead to development of cancer or other diseases not all genes are active all the time some genes continuously produce protein for basic cell functioning and other genes are switched on activated only when their protein coding information is uh, needed based on the environment each cell's function is largely determined by which um, of its approximately 25000 genes are activated that's that's all about a uh, brief now uh, let us see uh, the statistical scenario in india for uh, you know different kind of cancer so i took out data for national cancer registry program icmr 2001 and i found 10 leading sites of cancer in mumbai female so i could see that 24.7 um, roughly 28.6 people uh, percentage of people are suffering from breast cancer in comparison to cervix cancer um, that is 15.2 uh, more or lesser to 6.4 to ovary and 5 to esophagus and uh, oral cavity that is mouth cancer or oral ca uh, cancer is coming out to 3.4 lung cancer coming out to 2.6 stomach uh, cancer is 2.5 nhl uh, is 2.4 brain neuro um, cancer is 2.3 colon cancer is 2.3 so as you can see the most um, common cancer uh, in india and especially in mumbai the survey leads uh, says that breast cancer it's stopping in the chart so it's it's a uh, it's a very frightening um, case like most of the females are suffering um, from this particular type of cancer now let us try to understand what is breast cancer before then that we'll need to understand what breast is what what do you mean by male breast what do you mean by female breast and further we'll uh, you know talk about the cancer part of uh, breast now let's first we talk about female breast over in, in further slides we'll be talking about female breast now let us try to understand what female breast is all about um, now uh, breasts are composed uh, mainly of connective and fatty tissues in females suspended within the tissues of uh, each breast a network of milk forming lobes are there within each lobe are many smaller lobules are there each of which ends in dozen of tiny bulbs that can produce milk thin uh, tubes called as ducts connect bulbs lobules and uh, lobes uh, to the nipple which in uh, surround which is surrounded by an area of dark skin called as areola no muscle are in the breast uh, themselves but um, muscles covering your ribs lie under each breast blood vessels and lip vessels run throughout the throughout your breast blood uh, you know nourishes each breast cells Lymph vessels carry a clear fluid called as a lymph, which contains immune uh, system cells and drains waste products from the tissue. Lymph vessels lead to a pea-sized collection of tissue called as lymph nodes. Most of the lymph vessels in the breast leads to lymph nodes under the arm, which is called as axillary nodes. Now, uh, this is uh, what a, a usual structure of a female uh, breast is, and uh, this there's a condition called as benign breast condition. 
so uh, let, let before going to you know discuss uh, about the breast cancer and the benign and the cancer uh, can cancerous structure let us try to understand uh, uh, in the next slide what what uh, you know a male breast look like and how it is different from the female breast Um, as I discussed what female breast is in uh, breast is all about a comparative uh, differentiation can be seen in the diagram mentioned in just uh, the side slide above now we'll uh, talk about the male breast we have a condition called as gynecomastia uh, it's a condition that makes breast tissues well in boys and men although uh, in men, uh, the breast is not developed the way uh, it is developed in women. Uh, all boys are born with a small amount of breast tissue. Boys' body mostly make a hormone called as testosterone, which guides their sexual growth during the puberty. So that's a brief information about the ma male uh, breast and their condition of swollen breast. Uh, thank you. Now we have uh, now we have discussed what male breast is uh, and what is glycomastia is. Now try to understand what uh, you know uh, male breast cancer is. As you can see a slide, uh, the background image shows an abnormality in uh, one of the male's breast nipple. That is how um, uh, uh, you know uh, carcinic or um, infected. Um, breast in a male looks looks like that's a nipple part so now uh, even though males do not develop um, milk producing breasts as we all know but a male a man's breast cell and tissues can still develop a cancer there's quite high chances quite up chances that uh, men's men do get uh, 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 do suffer with uh, breast cancer so now uh, even also uh, male breast cancers very very rare less than one percent of all breast cancer cases develop in men and only one in thousand men will be diagnosed uh, uh, you know under the breast cancer category now breast cancer as as i said is very rare but it does happen according to the a study uh, Men diagnosed, diagnosed with early stage breast cancer are more likely to die from the cancer than the than women diagnosed with early stage. So, so even when we see a patient suffering from uh, a male patient suffering from uh, you know breast cancer and a female patient suffering from breast cancer, there's a high chance that the survival rate for the male will be less in comparison to female so uh, as we saw uh, as uh, the uh, research was done and it was found men with early stage disease survived uh, has a survival rate up to six years while women can survive up to 15 years so as you can see there's a difference over here so though it is rare but the chances of survival rate for the male is lesser in comparison to females Though it is very common in female, but the survival rate for uh, breast cancer patients for females is more in comparison to male uh, male breast cancer. So I, I hope you understand the difference and the crucial nature of, of the disease in both males and females. Now, how will you identify that, you know, a person maybe is suffering from breast cancer so there are few symptoms by which we can identify um, you know uh, early signs that he or uh, he is suffering from uh, you know breast cancer or not a uh, painless lump or thickening in your uh, you know breast near nipple area you will be able to see obviously there will be a change of skin covering your breast such as uh, dimpling or uh, you know puck, uh, puckering redness or some kind of scaling or abnormality or rashy kind of uh, appear appearance will appear near near your skin uh, close to breast changes in your nipple such as redness or scaling or nipple that begins to turn inward your nipple will start going inside usually it's outside you will see that nipple is going inside 
so and uh, there will be a discharge from your nipple some kind of fluid or discharge will be there so when you see these kind of symptom in your breast it's a sign of alarm you should go to a doctor especially an oncologist uh, and get yourself checked so these are the few very common symptoms for the male uh, breast cancer so as you can see this image you will find um, you know one percent of male in america uh, american so it's the data taken from American Cancer Society and uh, it estimates that 1% of all breast cancer occurs in male. Now it was also found that on average a woman with breast cancer uh, you know lived two years longer than the uh, than men with the breast cancer largely because men don't realize that they can get a breast cancer too like i said they don't know that they have a breast so if they don't know how will they can even imagine that they can have breast cancer so another thing is important uh, you know that uh, men with a strong family history of breast cancer are mostly you know high risky uh, risk uh, have, have high risk for um, you know uh, getting uh, in uh, having a cancer and uh, like there's something called as oncogenes which which are which travel from one one uh, genetic form to another uh, you know uh, it comes in your hereditary and when it gets a uh, you know um, familiar environment it gets triggered and uh, you you can develop a uh, cancer so it's most likely a genetic risk uh, uh, then genetic uh, disease as well so as said uh, if uh, you have a history of cancer in your family uh, you should be careful and watchful uh, so that uh, you you can take uh, you know necessary um, uh, precautions and uh, can save yourself from getting into uh, the cancerous situation now uh, men breast uh, cancer usually shows up as a lump under or near a nipple now uh, miss uh, you know mishappen breasts like non matching breast or nipple discharge also seen like i said in the previous slide your nipple will start going inside rather than coming outside so it's a possible uh, you know um, uh, chances that you there's some kind of abnormality and you must go and see an oncologist so these tests generally examines generally uh, done uh, and uh, you know mammograms and breast exams may be helpful uh, to know uh, more about if uh, you know breast cancer or normal uh, to understand what your breast is about now now we have discussed enough about the mess male breast cancer now we'll talk about female breast cancer in the next coming slides now how do we uh, come to know about a breast cancer situation so how how a uh, breast cancer in females look like what are the symptoms so like most common symptom like in men there will be um, you know thickening of the breast and the, first it will be painless and then uh, you know you'll find as you can see in the diagram there will be lumps near your breast and nipple and uh, the size of uh, or the shape of the breast will change okay and uh, you will see uh, you know redness red skin or redness around your breast and uh, you will also see a uh, uh, discharge of or uh, the bleeding uh, the blood will come out from the nipple and uh, and also uh, you will find like as i said in the male uh, the nipple will go inside the breast not outside so these uh, these features will be there and and most likely both uh, the symptoms are for the male breast cancer and the female breast cancer are similar so these are the symptoms for the female breast cancer and in the previous slide i spoke about the male breast cancer now let's talk about you know stages of breast cancer most likely both male and female are similar so uh, stage 0 uh, the cancer uh, size is um, with no uh, no spread uh, in the uh, spread on the lymph nodes so means in in the you know zero stage the cancer uh, uh, the cancer cell will size will be less than or equal to 2 
and uh, it is not spread over the body and the survival rate uh, for this type of this stage in the cancer is 100 percent now coming out to the stage two in stage two uh, you can also correlate what i'm saying with the diagram which is present in the uh, you know uh, slide now when it comes to stage two the cancer size is increased and it's somewhere between you know two to two point one in cent a centimeter or ha or uh, you know uh, have uh, spread into uh, spread up to three lymphatic nodes under the arm or to the lymph nodes under the sterum or both cancer greater than five centimeter with no spread um, in the lymph node is also come which will also come uh, in in stage two so means if if your size uh, of the cancer cell is less than um, uh, you know it's, it's between 2.1 to 5 that means it's a stage two cancer keeping in mind that it should it shouldn't have spread uh, in a more than three lymph nodes which are present uh, you know beneath your underarm beneath your arm and uh, also keeping in mind uh, if the cancer has not gone out of the lymphatic nodes and it is uh, still uh, up to 5 cm, still the stage is 2. Now well, let's come to the stage uh, and the survival for this type of uh, you know uh, stage will be 98%. Uh, now coming out to stage 3 when a tumor is less than equal uh, greater than equal to 5 and involvement of at least one lymph node uh, under the underarm is there or spread to lymph nodes is above the collarbone or spread of the breast skin causing swelling and redness known as inflammatory breast cancer then it will be it will be considered as you know stage 3 cancer now, uh, you know, when, when the cancer has spread to the distant sites such as lymph, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, uh, then this type of cancer is called as stage 3 cancer. Such kind of cancer, you know, um, rate survival is 52%. You know, uh, in this because the tumor is large larger than the two inches and across the size uh, you know size and the cancer has spread into auxiliary lymph node possible dimbling uh, inflammation or skin discharge will should be uh, you know appearing in this stage now coming out to be stage four the cancer has spread beyond the breast it has come outside the breast and uh, near the body and uh, it, it has spread to uh, you know lungs it has come to liver it has come to bone then it is called a stage for cancer and the survival rate for this type of cancer is 16 percent so uh, now how will you get to know uh, that uh, you know find uh, you're having uh, cancer or not for that there's a term called as breast self exam any of anybody can do that in their home and they can find whether it is there or not so uh, for example when 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 you're uh, lying down as you can see in the you know uh, uh, as you can see in the slide uh, pictures uh, you have to follow those instructions i'm reading out uh, one by one so first lie down and feel for the changes first lie down on your back with the pillow under your right shoulder as uh, you know you can see in the diagram one uh, image one and then uh, use the pad of the three fingers uh, on your left hand to the chest of uh, to check your right breast so you can see the hand image there's an encircle over there Keep the position of finger like that, keeping your lady finger apart and the thumb open. Now, press um, uh, press using the light medium and firm pressure in a circular uh, in the circle without lifting your fingers. So, can you see if you see the image three and four, you can see the direction you know going down, up, down, up, uh, down, up and uh, you can see the uh, square uh, where of the breast where where the position is to be there now uh, follow up and down pattern feel the change in your breast above and below your collarbone and in in your armpit 
repeat on on your left press using the using your right hand now um, for more then th that is the way to perform a, a breast scan a breast self exam now in front of mirror you you can look for changes first hold your arms at your side hold your arms over your head and press your ha hands on your hips and tighten your chest muscles bend forwards uh, bend forward uh, on your hips so these once you do these kind of things you will be able uh, to you know um, find whether whether there is some kind of abnormality in your breast or not now uh, what do you mean by a uh, clinical breast examination is something which is done by the medical uh, you know practitioner as you can see the gi file that is how uh, the the light which is going up and down in in the file the hand movements are done by the doctor or, or the oncologist or the specialist who is checking your breast to find whether the cancer there is not so that's a light pressure applied and it's the only way to find whether there is abnormality in your breast or not and by this the doctor will be able to examine whether you have um, some kind of abnormality present or not if if so found it will be to, you will be told to uh, go further for uh, you know more tests to detect whether you have a breast cancer or not uh, I did a small study and I took a sample of 67 educated people and I took uh, uh, the, my, my major population of um, uh, my study was from MNCs like Amazon, Google and education institutes like Jawalpur University, uh, Shadol University, Vishesh um, uh, School of uh, Business Management at Indore. I took uh, interviews from medical staff, nurses from which which belongs to Indoor American Cancer Hospital. I I, I checked with few housewives, a uh, few doctors, and neighbors at Hyderabad, and uh, I used the questionnaire for you know uh, finding out my results uh, from a journal of cancer research and therapeutics, uh, which was um, present in volume 13 and it was of issue two. Uh, the questionnaire came uh, in the research magazine in the year uh, 2017 in the month between April and June. I used a uh, single tail test, uh, visual charts and ANOVA uh, analysis to find out um, how a cancer, how to find out my result. So my hypothesis was um, H1 was general awareness on breast cancer among different strata of population in India is far below satisfactory. It is felt that, uh, that not more than 5% of the population have reasonable awareness on the breast cancer. An awareness test was conducted over 67 persons from different strata of population. The scores uh, are listed at the table one below. Minimum score to claim the reasonable assessment was fixed at 70%. It was found that only 4 persons could, persons could uh, score above 70%. Should this be taken uh, that the claim that only, ten, only the 10% of 10% uh, people are aware of the basics of deadly disease called breast cancer at 5% level of signif uh, significance is acceptable. You can um, you can see the data mentioned over there, and you can find uh, the numbers present in the Excel sheet. And um, score above 70% and below 70%, all results are present in the Excel sheet. Based on that, I could find a few conclusions which which are there in my next slide. So step one, stating hypothesis. So null hypothesis H naught mean should be you know more than equal to 70% which means uh, educated people from urban areas do not have reasonable level of awareness on breast cancer. Mean score is less than 70% whereas alternative hypothesis says H1 says that mean is less than 70% and educated people from urban area have reasonable level of awareness on breast cancer. Mean score is less than uh, you know 70%. So that uh, were the scenarios for my hypothesis uh, testing. So you can see uh, my uh, population was 70, uh, 67 people 
and hypothesis mean I have uh, you know uh, kept uh, as 70 percent so I when I, I when I tried uh, I could see X bar was 70, 34 percent my sample uh, standard deviation came out to be 21 percent I took a population of of infinite CL uh, uh, came out to be 0.95 or level of significance was 0 0.05 so now uh, let's talk about the type of test I use I used left tail test uh, type of uh, distribution was normal distribution and now I see that if uh, x bar is uh, greater than or equal to critical value we shall reject the null hypothesis standard error as uh, came out to be 0 0.2 uh, 0.025116 error of estimated came out to be 0.41312 my critical value is equal to hypothesized mean minus error of estimate which came out to be 69.958678% uh, percentage which is uh, you know equal, almost close to 70% you can see the graph uh, normal graph x is equal to 34% critical value is coming out to be 69.96% my my uh, star, mean or uh, that is mu not mu h naught is equal to 70 percent and i am having a standard deviation uh, graph statistical inference is that uh, there is enough evidence to reject the alternative hypothesis which means that less than 10 percent of people are aware of the basic and deadly uh, disease um, uh, called breast cancer at at five percent level of significance now uh, let's read about the uh, corollary now it was found it was uh, also hypothesized that less than 10 percent are aware of uh, the basic of deadly disease or one breast cancer mm -hmm. on examining the sample data it was found that only four out of 67 responses had scored more than 70 percent hence the percentage of our people having reasonable knowledge about breast cancer is 4 by 67 that is 5.96 percent so our assumption is also true that less than 7, 10 percent people are aware of basic of a deadly disease uh, on breast cancer now uh, let's talk about my hypothesis two test to investigate if the level uh, of uh, lack of awareness on breast cancer among male and female educated population from area is uh, population is equal or not so data i use from the same data from table one so in my data the number of uh, male participated was 32 and the number of female participated was 35 total of 67 we uh, used uh, the test for this a uh, single factor ANOVA hypothesis testing um, hypothesis testing I did is H naught uh, is my mean one equal to mean two that is means are equal um, means there is equal amount of lack of awareness among men and women whereas my alternative hypothesis says that not all means are equal uh, mean means amount of lack of awareness among men and women are not seen they are different this is how my table look like um, if I talk about count uh, the sum is 479 average is 14.69 and variance comes about 67.322 whereas if I talk about uh, 35 females which I took uh, their sum is 583 average is 16.657 and variance is 110.82 so when i performed a uh, anova test my f value came out to be 529 p value came out to be 4.4696 and my f critical value came out to be 3.9886 you can take it as 4 close to 4 and um, the level and the difference uh, degree of freedom came out to be 56 and to some some uh, came out to be 5902.5 so that is how the data uh, for 67 people looks like after performing an over single factor test you can see uh, the diagram you can see my f calculated value is 0 0.445 to 9 and f critical value is 3.9886 so any value coming out between these ranges are accepted and the value going 
outside 3.986 is rejected value. So there's a comparison between you know F critical and F calculated value. Now uh, let's talk further. F critical value as, as shown below is 3.9886 which is more than F calculated value which is 0.529. Statistical decision is there is sufficient evidence to reject the hypothesis. So there, there are equal amount of lack of awareness among both men and women. Both are equally unaware that uh, un unaware of the breast cancer, uh, what breast cancer is, and uh, what are the symptoms and basic knowledge they don't know. So uh, the result of my uh, research was there's a lack of awareness on breast cancer existing among uh, professionals from educated section of the population. Less than 10% of population have reasonable level of awareness on breast cancer. Both educated male and female population are equally unaware of uh, breast cancer. Most educated section of uh, population don't know how to perform breast self-examination and what breast uh, was what is clinical breast examination is. Sample population don't know how much abnormality uh, uh, in breast appears. More than 90% of men don't know that male can also have breast cancer. Now, uh, now let us understand um, breast cancer and stress, how they are related. So can uh, uh, stress cause breast cancer? That's a very common question. Uh, the short, short answer is no. Stress cannot cause uh, breast cancer. Most research haven't found evidence of direct link between stress and breast cancer. But the belief that emotional or psychological factor can cause uh, cancer is widespread and it is not a new idea. Almost 2000 years ago, the Greek doctor Galen noted that the malconic, sorry, melancholic women were, more, were much more susceptible to cancer than other women. Interest in, uh, interest in the mind-body connection and cancer has been renewed to recent decades as scientists gain their better understanding of the complex relationships among immune system, hormones and the nervous system. Evidence suggests that stress can disturb many components of the immune system and that an impaired immune system may increase a person's risk of cancer. Stress also impacts an individual's endocrine, that is hormones, hormonal uh, system, and increases, increasing or decreasing the, uh, you know, secretion of various hormones. So stress is indirectly, you know, causing a lot of problems in endocrine system, in your hormonal system, or uh, uh, due, to, due to which you are, uh, you will, you can find variation of secretion of hormones. Um, it causes, uh, you know, it it, uh, it causes weakening of your immune system due to which it, be it becomes more prone and you become more risk. Uh, the chances of having cancer uh, or the risk factor increases so high. So directly, as uh, you know, uh, stress is not causing cancer, but indirectly it does because it is weakening your immune system and many of the systems of the body uh, due to which you, due to whose failure uh, uh, the uh, cancer can come to you. Now, other researchers have theorized that cancer is more likely to occur in the people with certain personality traits, those who suppress their emotions, sulking nature, especially anger, who put on others' needs ahead of their own, or who have an attitude of helplessness or hopelessness so-called cancer-prone type C personality. Over uh, the years, researchers have put these theories to the test in a large number of studies invest investigating whether stressful life events or psychosocial factors play a role in the onset and progress, uh, sorry, progression of uh, breast cancer. Results have been inclusively and contradictory. 
so there's no um, straight factor but there are different indirect factors have been found by different researchers based on that a few studies have been have shown an association between stressful life events such as a divorce separation or death of a spouse close friend or relative and the development progression or recurrence of breast cancer but other studies have shown just the opposite the stressful life events are not associated with breast cancer risk similarly most studies haven't found personality factors to be related to breast cancer so there's a uh, there's a uh, some study says that uh, you know um, a stressful life causes cancer some study says that stressful life doesn't cause a cancer so there's there's always a line of argument stating that whether stress you know uh, cause can can be a triggering factor for cancer or not so it's always been a point of discussion among different doctors so that's also one of the reason why um, doctors uh, suggest cancer patients to have you know have uh, their lifestyles change and make them stress free so that they can feel better and uh, the they can they can uh, uh, respond to the therapies or the treatments in a better way in comparative in comparison uh, of uh, you know having us a, a therapy under stressful life so now going forward in general uh, the evidence uh, for a relationship involving psychological and social factor and breast cancer is weak it's not very strong relation but a uh, quality studies uh, studies on topics some researchers says that it is not possible to def uh, define definitely rule out uh, stress as a contributing factor to breast cancer now the bottom line if you have a breast cancer don't think that your cancer resulted or recurred because you were unable to deal with the life stress so please keep that thing out of your mind that you have cancer because of the stressful life now uh, but at the same time understand uh, that a diagnosis of cancer is bound to create stress so obviously when you are detected with a cancer or when you are detected or undergoing through the cancer uh, diagnosis uh, there's amount uh, of uh, you know stress you will have your stress level will increase probably after being uh, detected as positive it is more likely to increase more so you have to understand these things um, and uh, at that time you may need a psychological or counseling help so that is uh, you know uh, a, re uh, a relative uh, you know study on breast cancer and the stretch uh, sorry stress how do you uh, treat um, uh, uh, cancer for that first you need to you know identify what kind of uh, how will you identify a cancer you can identify it by clinical best uh, breast um, examination which is done by your doctor second there are a couple of tests which will be done by a doctor like mammography ultrasound certain a certain amount of blood tests will be done to find which which stage your uh, you know cancer is pat ct scans are done after that uh, you know evidence based treatment will be started the first thing it will be the drug therapy will be done for you then uh, multi modality treat therapy will be done surgery surgery will be there chemotherapy and uh, radiation therapy will be there hormonal therapy will be there and then uh, there will be a biological therapy each course of uh, time will be there in the chemotherapy it, it will it depends in which stage you are based on that a drug imposed will be there similarly the uh, settings for uh, radiation therapy and hormonal therapy will be also be there and biological therapy will be performed so what does the statistic of india says the most common uh, cancer in urban women uh, is uh, you know breast cancer 25 to 30 percent of all cancers in women is uh, mostly uh, diagnosed as uh, breast cancer they are uh, 2 lakh 70 thousand uh, cases getting registered new as a new case under the category of new cases every year there are 90 women um, uh, out of 1 lakh women 90 cases are registered as um, 
you know, breast cancer cases. Incidences are increasing at the rate of 16% per decade. Uh, worrying trends in younger women, like more, uh, most likely the younger women, uh, you know, catch hold of uh, this, this disease. Just less than 1% in, uh, in insiders, uh, incidences in males. 1% of cases for male get registered every year for breast cancer. Um, I was going through um, one of the hospital as my mother is getting treated for cancer. I found this board, uh, you know, uh, breast cancer board so in, in the breast cancer painting in the hotel, uh, hospital Continental, which is one of the leading hospital in uh, Hyderabad. I could see and I could find that uh, breast cancer is diagnosed every 20 second uh, 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 sorry breast cancer is diagnosed every 29 second around the world so uh, every 29 second there is a uh, one case for breast cancer uh, gets registered so you can understand how um, you know fast this disease is spreading uh, let us understand what are the risk factors Female uh, and increasing age, early, um, you know, menarche, uh, then late menopause, uh, parity, age of the first term pregnancy, oral um, con uh, contraceptives and hormonal problem, uh, family history of uh, breast cancer and diet and alcohol related thing. These are the, the uh, you know, uh, things. Uh, which uh, increases the risk factors for cancer, breast cancer. Now, what suggestion I can give on that is uh, first we should uh, generate awareness. Awareness campus in every school and colleges much must be there to teach their students how to perform uh, breast self examination. Uh, it, it must be included in the syllabi. Uh, gener generating awareness and updating the knowledge among the population, awareness among the medical and paramedical uh, professional or uh, professional of other disciplines and uh, use of all type of media for wide publicity. So that comes under the general awareness category. Second category is comes under train more and more people. Hospitals uh, should train uh, and ed include educated and trained supporting paramedical professionals like nurses, helpers, medical uh, technicians and other staff members in, in their uh, team along with the doctors. NGOs, uh, NGOs be encouraged by the government to make schemes for generating awareness. Third thing comes as out as research. Encra encourage research institutes and scholars in developing treatment technology. Suggest uh, and uh, fourth things come that collaboration, exploiting other systems of treatment of disease. Joint approach uh, validation of claim by other systems of treatment of disease like Ayurveda, homeopathy, Yunani, including use, uh, including use of technology and uh, internet or of technology for improving uh, the research must be done.